Today I'll be talking about the CLC um, portfolio specifically for the Kaigen Genomics Pro Suite software, uh, the latest version, version 20, which was released in January of 2020. And the Kaigen Genomics Pro Suite includes uh, four different products, uh, the um, CLC Genomics Workbench, the CLC Microbial Genomics Module, and the CLC Genomics Finishing Module. Actually, it's three products. Um, so, but before I get started, um, we have a small legal disclaimer. The Kaigen products shown here are intended for molecular biology applications only. They are not intended for diagnosis, prevention, or treatment of disease. And for up-to-date licensing information and product-specific disclaimers, please see the respective Kaigen kit handbook or user manual, including our documentation on the software on our website. Uh, Kaijin kit handbooks and user manuals are available at www.kaijin.com or can be requested from our technical services uh, or your local distributor. Okay, so the Kaijin Genomics Pro Suite uh, combines multiple capabilities together for laboratory scientists and bioinformaticians to efficiently conduct their bioinformatics analysis on both next gen sequencing uh, data as well as Sanger sequencing data. Uh, and to do classical molecular biology uh, comparative genomics types uh, uh, research. And the key functionalities of the software include genome assembly and annotation tools, strain typing and characterization tools for bacterial, isolates, and viral uh, pathogens as well, microbiome analysis, including both 16S and shotgun metagenomics, um, and it integrates seamlessly with the um, uh, CLC Genomics Server, as well as the uh, CLC Genomics Cloud Engine. So the Microbial Genomics Module specifically includes the capability to do strain typing and epidemiology uh, for taxonomic identification of isolates, um, typing and phylogenetics capabilities, multiple approaches there, including uh, the ability to uh, identify and construct SNP trees, as well as camera based uh, trees, and to do minimum spanning uh, trees as well from both um, MLST and core genome or whole genome MLST data. Uh, recently, we updated our microbial genomics module to include um, core genome and whole genome MLST uh, strain typing capabilities. And I'll be doing a, a very brief uh, live demo of what those trees look like and some of the functionality that's included there. We also include the ability to download uh, multiple publicly available uh, antimicrobial resistance databases for analysis of your isolates. And Kaigen also maintains a integrated database called the Kaigen Microbial Insights Database, which um, integrates both uh, CARD, Argonaut, ResFinder, and the NIH AMR Finder database into a single uh, uh, point of entry and a, a consistent ontology across the whole database as well. And that's also available. In addition, uh, you have access to VRDB, uh, a widely used uh, database on virulence and pathogen genes, pathogenic genes, as well as uh, ARIES Genetics uh, proprietary uh, ARIES DB, which is a a uh, collection of uh, antimicrobial resistance genes from over 100 different pathogens that are all traceable back to their clinical source. For metagenomics capabilities, we, as I mentioned earlier, we include both Amplicon and 16S or ITS uh, targeted microbiome profiling, as well as de novo assembly and um, binning tools, uh, as well as functional annotation tools for uh, functional metagenomics or functional genomics as well. And for our annotation tools, um, we have provided our users with multiple approaches, including BLAST, the Diamond algorithm. There's also gene ontology classification tools, as well as uh, protein domain uh, or PFAM domain uh, identification and predicted genes. <clears throat> for uh, pathogen outbreak and tracing purposes, um, this is kind of a screenshot of, of what the, one of the views might look like inside the workbench. Um, and um, in this case here, you're seeing a minimum spanning tree of Campylobacter uh, isolates using the traditional seven gene MLST uh, approach. 
you have your tree in the upper left hand window here, as well as a heat map of uh, your different alleles, as well as uh, vertically, as well as um, all of the uh, individual isolates um, uh, uh, on, the, on the left side, and a table that allows you to quickly navigate the isolates of interest. Um, on the right here, you see another type of tree. This is built from a SIP based tree on tuberculosis isolates from a recent uh, hospital uh, uh, outbreak that was published in the, in the open literature. And it also is kind of a, a snapshot of how you can tie metadata that you might have associated with individual isolates or strains um, to, uh, to any kind of phylogenetic tree that you might build. And in this case, uh, the researchers um, were indicating, you know, which isolates are coming from Austria or Germany or Romania, et cetera. Um, and the merging of our phylogenetic tree tools with tables of data with your metadata in it allows our users to um, uh, customize their trees quite a bit to, to highlight the data that's relevant for their, um, for their research. And these links here to a white paper and webinar where you can dive deeper into these capabilities are live links. And if you're, we'll provide you with the slides later so you can go ahead and click through and find these. They're also um, available directly on our website. The microbial genomics module also has um, the ability to um, detect and visualize antibiotic resistance markers um, using multiple approaches. We have a gene-based tool that uh, uh, takes uh, a gene database as input of AMR factors and then identifies uh, candidate AMR genes using BLAST. Um, we also have a tool called uh, Point Finder, which is uh, it's an implementation of the Point Finder algorithm that's actually released by DTU in Denmark and uses their uh, databases as well, which are directly you can import into CLC. And that tool identifies specific SNPs or um, point mutations in, um, in genes that would confer resistance uh, if they were mutated. A classic example is um, Gyre A, Gyre B, for example. And uh, what we see here in the, this, this snap screenshot of uh, the CLC is the, our 3D um, protein structure viewer in the upper left-hand corner with um, the reference genome for tuberculosis, H37RV, and various tracks showing the different genes here. And in this uh, gene here that's visualized on the genome, there are certain point mutations. And this is in the Gyre, uh, Gyre A gene. And we have loaded up the actual Gyre protein structure model, and you can actually um, navigate directly to this position in your model um, through the, the variant table of where these mutations are actually been identified. And this is a way of taking genomics data and actually um, uh, visualizing it in, uh, in 3D space on your protein structures to get a good idea of um, sort of what the potential impact might be of certain mutations. On this next slide, you can see an overview of our microbiome tools, um, which previously I mentioned that we have taxonomic profiling tools as well as de novo assembly and annotation tools um, for your assemblies. Um, and what you see here is a screenshot of the genomics workbench view, where in the upper left-hand corner, you can see an aggregate of taxonomics abundance profiles uh, for a, a range of samples that are included in a particular research study. Uh, principal coordinate analysis plot of those same samples, seeing sort of separation of the samples um, to identify potential groups of interest. There is a rarefaction curve um, for, from the alpha diversity analysis tool that shows depth of sequencing um, and the number of uh, taxonomic uh, units um, identified. And for each of the individual samples, we also include a uh, metagenomics report, if you will, that highlights the total number of species, genus found, et cetera, the depth of sequencing, and the various other statistics associated with the sample. And it's important to note here that um, this tool set specifically for the application of microbiome profiling has been highlighted in two recent publications um, that were review articles that um, independently uh, concluded that the CLC platform was best in class for enabling uh, microbiome research. And links to those articles are provided here, as well as linked to a research paper, white paper that we also released from our own group, um, uh, demonstrating its utility for um, 16S ribosomal and fungal ITS uh, uh, analysis. It's also important to note that all of these tools are uh, work seamlessly with the rest of the genomics workbench environment. Um, uh, which includes, for example, the ability to rapidly build workflows using our drag and drop interface. This is a snapshot of um, 
uh, our databases that also work seamlessly with the microbial genomics module. There's a wide range of uh, different types of databases that you can access um, in the public domain, as well as proprietary databases that are from uh, Kynagen that are uh, available through the CLC uh, genomics workbench platform. In addition to um, the microbial genomics module that's included in the ProSuite, you also get the CLC genome finishing module. And this is a additional set of tools that specifically enable uh, researchers who are doing whole genome sequencing and de novo assembly to create high quality closed uh, uh, genomes or high quality draft genomes uh, to share with the rest of the research community. It takes um, the process of doing de novo assembly and binning uh, and uh, polishing of data um, uh, really one one not step forward but really a leap forward in the sense that it provides um, genome uh, assemblers or curators the ability to visualize their assemblies and manually correct uh, chimeric uh, contigs and other aspects of the genome assembly that might have been in error due to um, differences in the sequencing data or differences in chemistry that might have been used that um, pulling different data together. Um, so in this view here, you can see the um, contact joining tool where um, the researcher has um, a specific contact that he's uh, created. In this case, it's called join contact number three. And what they've done is the tool enables um, the investigator to um, align multiple contigs from an individual assembly at the ends and um, you can use it with or without a reference as a backbone and and as a scaffold um, to create sort of super assemblies or larger scaffolds out of your individual contigs. Um, this can be done manually or it can be done automated in an automated fashion as part of a workflow as well and then uh, researchers can go back and correct those assemblies um, to further improve them before releasing them. We have uh, several video tutorials on how to use these tools, as well as a technical note describing the features of the genome finishing module in detail. So now I'll get to the real reason that you're here, which is to learn about um, bacterial strain typing and genomics characterization uh, of multi-drug resistance using the CLC microbial genomics module. So there are three major challenges that are often faced by researchers um, uh, involved in microbial genomics uh, research, um, whether you're in the public health space or clinical microbiology space, or you're in the biotech uh, basic research space. It's not uncommon to um, have a need for high quality assemblies and annotation of isolates, uh, the ability to um, identify differences among your isolates using strain typing, uh, established strain typing schemas, uh, or um, in the absence of established uh, strain typing schemas to be able to develop your own methods and your own schemas, or to use a reference-free approach um, like a camera-based tool. Um, and also researchers are frequently obviously interested in characterizing the function uh, of different genes or uh, uh, groups of genes that might be identified in their in their isolates and for example in the case of antibiotic resistance markers or virulence factors and i'll be walking through each of these uh, use cases um, uh, with uh, campylobacter ggni uh, data that was obtained from a, um, a paper and released on sra so this is the paper where this data comes from. It was published in 2017, where they did a benchmarking of MLST tools that are available in the public domain. Um, all of the data available for this paper is, uh, um, is available on uh, Sequence Read Archive at NCBI, and CLC Genomics Workbench includes an integrated SRA, SRA uh, query tool that where you can um, query for um, uh, samples by SRA number or by bio sample or even by bio project. So, for example, in this publication, the bio project accession number is listed, and all I had to do was simply use that accession number to search. Um, it returned a list of the actual raw sequencing data from that, that paper, and then I was able to download these results directly to my laptop. It's a, um, a, a very convenient uh, aspect of the platform is that we do directly tie into these public databases. And in this um, brief tutorial, what I'll be doing is showing you how to download data from SRA, build an Excel table of the metadata associated with each of these individual samples, which I actually obtained from the paper. Um, we'll download the Campylobacter MLST schema. We'll do an, a de novo assembly of the, the raw data. 
uh, do strain typing on those isolates. We'll characterize whether or not they have antimicrobial resistance genes, and then we'll build an automated workflow that will um, uh, do everything I just mentioned um, from end to end without, um, without any user interaction. So the first thing, as I mentioned, was identifying uh, where to find data in the public domain. So within CLC, under the download menu, you'll notice that we have uh, a tool for searching reads for raw reads on SRA, searching for sequences for GenBank or NCBI that are like completed isolates for protein sequences, specific genes, et cetera. You can also pull down uh, protein structures or RNA structures from the protein data bank. Um, and you can also search for sequences in, directly in Uniprot uh, for proteins and things like that. So in this case, I, um, uh, well, in the screenshot here, it shows I have an individual sample number that was um, I'm querying for. And after searching for that, I was able to identify the specific uh, raw sequencing data associated with that sample. And it's just a matter of highlighting the sample and clicking the download button, and then it goes ahead and it downloads it to your local, um, uh, your local machine. The next step would be to take the metadata um, and assign that metadata to your individual um, samples within CLC. And the process to do that actually starts out in uh, Microsoft Excel. Um, where you would um, create a table uh, of your data where every column in your table is um, different fields of interest um, and every row in your table is the different samples that you'll be doing on your analysis. And the important thing about uh, assigning metadata to your samples in CLC is to make sure that at least one of the columns uh, in your metadata table matches up with the sequence name uh, of the actual files or sequence reads that are um, being analyzed. So whether you've downloaded them from SRA or whether it's your own sequencing data that you've imported into CLC from a recent sequencing run, you wanna make sure that the actual file name matches up with something in the table that you're, you're importing. Once you have your table constructed, um, it's a simple matter of uh, launching the import metadata tool, which is under the file menu. That uh, prompts you with this um, window here where you point to the Excel file, it imports the data and shows you the individual columns that you're gonna be importing. Uh, and then it will try to assign them to um, data that you, uh, you basically point this tool to a specific folder or a specific set of files that are already with it, imported within CLC sequencing reads. And then the end result is that you'll have a, a table within CLC that uh, has a list of all your strains. It'll look exactly like what it looks like in, CL, in Excel. But the, the, the major advantage here is that you can actually, any subsequent experiments or results or analysis that's done on the samples that are associated with this metadata will be, all of the, those downstream files will be automatically associated with this table. So you can use your metadata table as a way of organizing your project data. And if you're looking for specific uh, de novo assembly results or um, uh, variant calling results or something for a, a particular sample, all you need to do is open up the metadata in the future, click on the row of interest, and then, um, uh, you would click on the find associated uh, data uh, button and it will immediately open up a, um, a link or a list of all of the associated uh, results and data that's, that's um, been um, connected to that particular row in your table. After I had imported all of my raw data um, and uh, the metadata associated with that and, and created those associations, the next step in the in the process would, was for me to download the MLST typing scheme for Campylobacter. So CLC uh, Microbial Genomics Module provides connections directly to pubmlst.org. Um, you can browse the existing MLST schemas that are available through pubmlst and download them directly into your workbench to, for, for analysis. And there's a huge range of different um, bacterial pathogens that are uh, available on uh, pubmlst. In addition, we also include tools for you to create your own MLST schemas. Um, if you have a non-model system or some other bacteria or whatever that is not in the public domain, um, you can use this, our tools to actually uh, very quickly create uh, a schema from scratch that then can be reused for further analysis down the road. Um, but in our case for Campylobacter, um, 
we want to do uh, download the classic uh, MLST schema, 7-gene MLST schema. And to do that, we because we have next-gen sequencing data and not Sanger data, we use the tool uh, download MLST schema from PumLST under the NGS MLST folder. For core genome or whole, whole genome MLST, where the schemas are much larger, uh, with many, many more alleles associated with them, um, you would use the download large MLST schema tool under the large MLST folder. An easy way to find these tools, uh, just as a side note here, in, you can, of course, navigate through your tool menu and find the tools, but there's over 300 tools included in CLC, and sometimes it can be challenging to find the specific tool that you might need. Um, you can favorite tools, and they will be saved on your favorites tab. If you just switch over to that favorites tab, you would see them. Another way to quickly find tools is actually to use our quick launch button. So there's a button here at the top of the uh, view that if you click that, it pops up this little quick launch window. And it, this is a free text search area where you can type in pretty much anything uh, that you might, that's in the name of the tool that you're looking for. And it will quickly um, sort of filter the list down to only the tools that match your search query. And this is a very convenient way to quickly find tools. So I went ahead and downloaded the, the uh, uh, Campylobacter uh, MLST uh, typing schemes, and then um, went ahead and, and did analysis on uh, these uh, these individual samples. And I'll walk through that a little bit further here in a second. Um, so the traditional seven gene MLST typing school. This is a schema. This is a, a view of what that looks like up close. Um, we have a tr the minimum spanning tree in the upper left hand corner here. There's a heat map of uh, the different the seven different alleles as well as all of the isolates. And you can actually, um, this is interactive, um, where you can click in this, in this um, uh, hierarchical clustering heat map, and it will actually highlight the specific uh, isolates in the tree on the left. You can also open up a table of your trees to look for specific sequence types of interest, which is often of interest to clinical microbiologists. And when you click one or more of those isolates in your table, it will um, there's a button here that says select sequence types in other views. Clicking that button will then um, highlight those isolates in your tree as well. And as a brief uh, introduction to how that works, um, here we are in uh, CLC. Um, I'll go ahead and just make this window a little bit larger. And um, let's see here. We'll open up the heat map that I was showing a moment ago. I'll put that over here in this uh, in this window. So let's drag that here, one moment, please. There we go. And uh, just to show you some of the interactive aspects of the way this tool works. I'm sorry, the go-to meeting toolbar is actually in the way. There it is. So you can change coloring and so forth of your um, heat map of interest. Um, I can highlight various things uh, like this. And then, for example, if I had a specific isolate that I was looking for in the table and I clicked this here, you'll notice well, that's found in this larger cluster here, but let's try another one. Uh, I'll see 48 maybe. No, it's 460 maybe. Okay, well, just try it out a little bit further. A lot of these are actually found, these sequence types seem to be found in the same that central cluster there. So if I were to drop this down, you'll see that this window actually will expand. And there's a bit of an animation here as the software sort of figures out um, the optimal distances to keep all these clusters separate. And um, looks to me as though all these isolates are actually found in that central cluster. So let me just scroll down here a bit. And well, in any case, um, if I were to then do it the other way, where I were to highlight, for example, a region out here, I could select these in other views. And you'll notice that over here, the heat map updated, uh, and it also, uh, it also highlighted those same uh, isolates in the table, whereas if I were to, for example, uh, let's say highlight, uh, let's, let's say this cluster here, uh, and I, again, click this again, it will take me to that location on the table of where these sequence types are located and also then change the view of the actual um, uh, heat map where you can see that they're actually um, 
rows now that have been selected that are um, um, allow you to further investigate that. So then if you had a specific outbreak that was associated with a particular cluster, you could then um, create a sub cluster or sub scheme out of this MLST schema um, instantly by just clicking this button here and it will then uh, basically create an entirely new um, MLST schema file that would allow you to then add or do more comparative analysis down the road. Um, so I'm gonna switch back to my presentation. Okay. So now we see uh, uh, a uh, our work our workflow uh, editor over here on the right, and this is specifically for in this example. What I'm doing is I'm uh, creating a simple workflow that does reed trimming. Uh, some quality control analysis of my input data and then does a de novo assembly where the, um, the draft assembly is one of the outputs as well as a number of different reports. Um, this is a kind of a first step towards actually doing strain typing on all of your isolates. Um, there's a couple of different ways that you can run uh, workflows on multiple samples. When you launch a workflow, you'll have an option to run it in batch mode, which means that it, it will run that same workflow one time on all of the input samples that you are um, um, submitting to the workflow. There's another way that you can run workflows now, which is a new way that we introduced in the most recent release of the CLC platform, which is we introduced two new tools that are flow control tools uh, for our workflow editor. One is the iterate tool and the other is the collect and distribute tool. And I want to encourage uh, the participants in this webinar to um, read up on these tools in our documentation. I won't go into details about them here, but um, I will say that these tools allow you to um, run uh, multiple samples through a single workflow where the workflow itself only actually runs once and the control of what sections of a workflow actually iterate or become loops, if you will, and when data is collected from multiple samples and then distributed to a consolidated report um, is uh, something that is controlled by the user when they create the workflow or can be controlled by a metadata table depending on um, what the needs are. And a simple example would be if you were to, let's say you were doing um, uh, RNA-seq analysis uh, for gene expression and you wanted to compare uh, control versus experimental data, or you had a time series, you might want to have um, different sets of data being run through a workflow, uh, analyzed slightly differently, um, depending on uh, uh, whether or not the, the those individual samples were, you know, part of the control set or part of the experimental set um, or a specific time point, for example. And your metadata tables could control that and control the behavior of these iterate and um, collect and distribute uh, tools that, that can be included in your workflows. It's very powerful. So the running this the workflow I had created uh, produced a number of re reports, including a, a QC report, which um, we're only showing a, a small window section of here. Um, in this view, this is a, a view of the quality distribution of the reads going in, um, a trimming report of the reads prior to the actual assembly, um, uh, assembly report that kind of shows the quality um, of the assembly itself, including scaffolding regions and what the N50 was and the number of contigs and so forth. And then you can actually open up the assembly itself, of course, and you can see a list of the 136 contigs and each of these are essentially read mappings that can be further opened and you can investigate how the reads were mapped and um, what areas of those contigs had low coverage, et cetera. Um, Once I had completed all of the de novo assemblies of the samples that were obtained from that paper, um, running the strain typing tool um, uh, on, on those assemblies produced a number of reports. Uh, one of them, for example, is this, um, uh, this is the strain typing report for the traditional 7-gene MLST um, uh, tool, which uh, identifies the allele itself, what the specific sequence was for that sequence type, and uh, whether it matched or not, and what the depth of coverage was for the match that was hit, and what the uh, was the highest quality sequence type that was identified. Um, so we don't uh, necessarily return only a single result. What I mean by that is 
um, you do see a single result at the top of this report, but if you actually open up the output of the MLST tools as a table, um, you'll see a rank ordering of all of the sort of second and third best uh, potential sequence types that might be assigned to an individual um, sample. And in this case, um, the score of 1.0 is as high as you can get and sequence type eight was assigned, which is correct. Over here with the CGMLST tools, we also came to the same conclusion that this was uh, sequence type number eight. Um, and uh, this, this particular report also has some coloring, uh, highlights green as being the best, um, the best hit. Uh, and this is a view of the actual minimum spanning tree where we've selected uh, this sequence type in this table here. We clicked the button select types and other views and it highlighted where in the actual tree um, uh, those sequence types are actually located. Which would be helpful if you were doing comparative analysis to other isolates, for example, uh, during an outbreak. I mentioned earlier that we, for moving on to antimicrobial resistance uh, characterization, I mentioned earlier that uh, Kyogen has a database that we call the Kyogen Microbial Insights AR database. This is an integration of the Comprehensive Antibi Antimicrobial Resistance Database, or CARD, ResFinder, Argonaut, and the NIH's AMR Finder database. Um, it's important to note that um, ResFinder, Argonaut, and AMR Finder do not have a structured ontology associated with antibiotic resistance genes, um, but CARD does. And it was important to us to maintain um, a, uh, a structure in that way, an ontology. So we actually re-implemented CARD's ontology and will continue to maintain uh, the ontology that CARD uh, uses. Um, and we applied it to all of the other genes that were pulled uh, from these other databases in our integrated database as well, QMIAR. And this is a, one view of the database itself where we have a list of different markers. We uh, have kind of a, you could say, a, um, a source or an origin uh, identifier where we indicate which database uh, this particular gene was uh, originated from. You'll notice that um, some genes are found in CARD and not in others. And if I were to scroll through this, this table, you would see that there are um, there, there's quite a lot of diversity or disparity, I should say, between the overlap between these different databases. Not all genes are found in all databases. I mean, that's the whole point of why we pulled this database together. We also add um, PubMed IDs for each gene in QMIAR, where if you were to do your live links, where if you were to click these, they'll take you out to the original literature that are was the original citation for when this gene was discovered and when it was deposited into the card, um, which is helpful for researchers when they want to investigate specific uh, genes that might be conferring resistance. In addition, we also provide access to the ARIES, uh, ARIES DB from ARIES Genetics. And as I mentioned earlier, this consists of AMR markers uh, that have, have been identified through machine learning methods from over 11,000 clinical isolates resistant pathogens. The, um, the important thing to note uh, about ARIES-DB is that all the isolates in ARIES-DB come from human clinical um, uh, sources, and they all have been empirically tested uh, for antibiotic susceptibility, um, uh, and then whole genome sequencing was done using a consistent method. The assembly pipelines are all consistent, and uh, the annotation pipelines were all consistent across all the isolates in ARIES-DB. Um, and so access to ARIES-DB provides uh, our users the ability to identify genes. Some are known antibiotic resistance genes, not surprisingly. Others and many, however, are novel and not in, the, uh, uh, in these other public databases. We also provide uh, MIC values and um, uh, likelihood scores associated with uh, how likely it is that an individual marker that we've identified in ARIES-DB is actually conferring resistance. Um, so there's kind of a breakdown here of the number of different genes and SNPs that we've identified, that ARIES Genetics has identified that we've included in this database for you to um, investigate further. On the algorithm side, um, uh, for AMR prediction, we have a find resistance uh, nucleotide database tool, the uh, find resistance with point finder, and uh, find resistance with shortbread. Uh, tools and these have uh, different inputs and um, different outputs depending on the type of data that you um, you're working with and types of analysis that you need. 
Um, to find resistance with nucleotide database tool requires contigs or whole genomes as input, and it'll identify genes uh, conferring resistance to it, really any gene database that you provide, but it's, it's intended to be used with one of the databases that we provide as download, but you, of course, can create your own as well. The find resistance with point finder uh, is run on raw data, and it then compares that to a very highly well curated database of point mutations that's maintained by uh, DTU in Denmark. And then uh, the output of that is a table of resistance markers and the specific SNPs that are associated with, um, with resistance. Um, the shortbread tool, um, which anecdotally is one of my favorites, uh, also runs on raw reads. Um, and this uses what's called a shortbread database, which is a database of pre-compiled protein markers um, um, that um, are designed, these are antibiotic resistance gene or proteins and the specific markers associated with resistance that are um, not found in uh, any other genes other than these resistance genes. And so you run your raw reads uh, through uh, the shortbread pipeline and it will pick those reads out uh, um, that have a high level of similarity uh, or would be predicted to um, uh, have a high level of similarity to DNA that would encode these specific protein markers. So it's a way of using protein data, um, protein markers to actually query your genomic data. Um, so especially for hypothesis generation and the ability to identify novel uh, um, antibiotic resistance markers, shortbread, I think, uh, does an excellent job at this because of the um, sort of inherent flexibility of um, DNA sequence as it as it gets translated into into protein sequence, right? So it's a very broad range there, and it's a it's a great way to identify new markers that might not otherwise be present uh, in the databases themselves. So here's a simple workflow where um, your raw data is coming in. Uh, we do a, a trimming step up front, and then after trimming the reads, we run those raw reads through shortbread um, and through point finder. We then do a de novo assembly on those reads, um, and then after the assembly is completed, we run those assemblies through the find resistance with nucleotide database. So this is a simple workflow that takes raw FASTQ files as input, and the output is a analysis using three different antibiotic resistance um, methods uh, as to whether or not your isolate actually has uh, resistance genes and specifically where they are and, and what the nature of them is. This is a snapshot of uh, what some of the outputs might look like in CLC. Um, in the upper left-hand corner, you have the output of our um, gene finding tool, where in this case, there were five different genes that were identified, their level of similarity to what was in the database. Um, the length of the match and so forth, the specific contig that they were identified on, et cetera. Um, in the upper right-hand corner, uh, these are reads that were, I, you can say were quote-unquote binned. In other words, they had a high level of similarity to known antibiotic resistance genes um, that were pulled out using the point finder tool. Um, in the lower left-hand corner, uh, this is a list of um, potential drug resistance phenotypes that were identified in your sample. Um, and uh, the number of um, uh, hits that were assigned to each one of those. Now, a note here for those who are sort of eagle-eyed, you'll notice that a lot of these sort of generically say antibiotic molecule. Um, and this is because the underlying phenotypic um, uh, ontology, the, this is actually phenotypic ARO number that's assigned to these, um, in the card database that has uh, identical names. So this is a known issue that we're addressing in the next in a, a near release in the near future that will have a, um, a better resolution here on the actual uh, title here. So don't be, uh, don't be scared off now. But if you were to click through and um, uh, follow these links to your, uh, with your web browser, you would see indeed that um, uh, what the specific antibiotic resistance uh, markers were and, and what the drugs were that were associated with those. So bringing this all together, um, you have a single workflow here that does raw FASTQ files up front as input. We trim the reads, we do a de novo assembly on those reads, and we can find res antibiotic resistance genes and also do our QC. The raw reads themselves um, then can, as I mentioned earlier, would can be run into our point finder tool or a shortbread tool for antibiotic resistance genes. Um, as well as serving as input into our uh, CGMLST uh, tool set, where we can uh, identify string typing in a um, assembly-free manner 
and actually um, add that if a new typing, a uh, new string type has been identified, actually add that uh, type to uh, to a schema or database uh, that you're you're currently using. And uh, I haven't covered it here in this presentation, but uh, directly from this de novo assembly uh, step in this workflow, you can also see that we're identifying new genes and finding prokaryotic genes uh, in our assemblies. And we're analyzing those genes with diamond um, and um, providing a functional uh, assessment and classification of those genes. And then we're applying um, an, an analysis of PFAM domains and gene ontology or GO annotations as well will be applied. And this enables researchers to take a de novo assembly, identify genes, and then do a functional classification um, on what sort of other um, genomic or genetic um, capabilities or, or um, features are present in the, in, in the organism of interest. So today, um, as a brief review, uh, we kind of overviewed some of the capabilities of the CLC Genomics Pro Suite, uh, specifically um, really kind of went into detail about the microbial genomics module as it relates to strain typing and strain characterization for AMR. Um, we learned how to download data from SRA, use Excel uh, as a starting point for importing metadata and then assigning that metadata to your actual samples in CLC. We uh, reviewed how to download MLST schemas, do de novo assemblies and strain typing, as well as uh, work with our antimicrobial resistance uh, databases and analysis tools. Uh, and lastly, and importantly, um, one of the strengths of the CLC platform is the ability to build single workflows that automate the entire process from, from one end to the other. Um, one other final comment I'll make here um, is the underlying databases that we are using throughout this uh, tutorial are um, uh, customizable. So in, um, in pretty much every instance, uh, users can download data directly from GenBank or other public resources directly within CLC. Or if there are other databases that you may have access to or other public resources uh, that have uh, draft assemblies or genomes that you want to work with, um, you can, of, of course, uh, import those into CLC directly as well um, without using our integrated tools, but just using our standard importers to create your own customized databases. And um, this is this capability of building flexible uh, microbial genomics databases is really a strength of the platform because you can reapply this for microbiome profiling on the fly. Um, you can also uh, maintain and update your own MLST schemas for isolates, et cetera. There's a lot of applications uh, on the database uh, side and customization side that um, many, many folks find very useful. So for more information, uh, there's a link here to our microbial genomics uh, portion of our research and discovery portfolio. Um, and uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Um, please feel free to contact us if you have any further questions.